I started uh, begin working here in the uh, Manila uh, once I graduated high school. I've been a domestic worker with an old couple. They have a grandchild, which should I bring to the to their parents in Doha, Qatar. They want me to uh, pay all their expenses that we've been uh, paid in the Philippines, like the airfare, yeah. My journey in Qatar begins uh, when I do uh, a lot of work as a laundry worker, a cleaner, bus conductor, and a nanny all at the same time. Governance is of major importance and this is really what's going to, to determine the outcome of migration for society and of course for the migrants themselves. I think it's really important when we talk about policy coherence not to think of it only uh, across uh, policy sectors but as well across governance levels. Um, and I really want to emphasize the importance in particular of the role of local and regional authorities and cities in particular when it comes to migration governance. So the Committee on Migration and Development, uh, as the uh, subcommittee of the uh, Regional Development Council, this is the area wherein local governments, um, what the issues and concerns of um, their clients uh, in their communities are being um, addressed um, at the regional level. So we can make appropriate interventions and solutions for these um, issues and concerns uh, that are being uh, experienced by our uh, overseas Filipinos. Our 1995 Magna Carta of Migrant Workers, which pretty much lays down the, the legal foundation, was a result of the hanging of one Filipino domestic worker in Singapore, Flor Contemplacion. And uh, over the years, many of the amendments in the law were actually responding to many of the dramatic uh, abuse cases of Filipinos. The Safe and Fair uh, uh, program in Asia is focusing on women migrant workers uh, because uh, labor migration in Asia is a big uh, so a social phenomenon. The vulnerabilities are high. The cases of abuse have been uh, repeatedly reported. I have three counts of sexual harassment there with my co-worker. My first meal in the morning is at 3 p.m. It's a hell, I said. I have, I have been working two years in the hell. Objective number one of Safe and Fair, the priority of Safe and Fair in the next two to three years would be to really give technical inputs on the implementation and even uh, re review and reform of many of the existing laws. We can look at what's happening in the Philippines, uh, which is a country really that has been uh, you know, doing a lot of uh, really interesting initiatives in terms of bringing different stakeholders at local level. Uh, working together, understanding how migration impacts a given territory and fitting that into local policy making, local decision making. And here we're talking about not only uh, governance uh, in terms of administrations, in terms of uh, locally elected officials, but also very much bringing in civil society organizations, the private sector. So again, looking at it from a systemic approach. When I go back home, uh, it's my uh, happiest day, I think. <laughs> my friend and also a former domestic worker invited me to join the union of uh, domestic worker. After that, okay, I said I will uh, attend some uh, meetings. And then it began my journey to be an activist, a unionist. The main role of being a national president of domestic worker is uh, a big responsibility, of course. Right now, we do more campaigns about the social security system and then uh, helping migrant domestic workers also in distress. I think this is one of the good practices of the Philippines that the migration uh, civil society groups recognize the role of trade unions. In order to organize and empower the migrants and then the women, trade unions have to be involved because they are the workers' organizations. They sit in the committee and they're involved in all our projects from the subnational up to the national levels. 
our campaign, of course, the uh, expanded maternity law. Uh, we are fighting for that for almost two years, and then um, we won. We won the law. <laughs> caring also for the young workers, the, the next generation, I think. Because um, sometimes migration is the uh, solution for them.